I know these days you're spending a lot of time at home, sitting on the couch, watching your favorite videos, and even talking to your friends on the phone. You might even be doing some work online. Have you ever thought about how you would do all these things without electricity? Not too long ago, things were very different. Nowadays, electricity is one of the most important services. I'm Natalie, Corporate Communications Officer at Belize Electricity Limited. Have you ever wondered what happens behind the scenes every day so that you can do the things you need to do? There are so many reasons why you get safe and reliable electricity inside your home. In the coming weeks, I'll take you on an electrifying journey. Join me as we go live on Facebook. Let's go behind the scenes to find out about the what and whys of energy. Follow BEL's Facebook page to learn more about the show and how you can participate. Good morning, Belize. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to another segment. This is our third segment of the What and Whys of Energy. I am your host, Natalie Novello Palacio. Now, before we go into the show, I just wanted to say that, as we know, we are still in the midst of a pandemic, so we have had to be um, re-envisioning how we do things, and so um, part of it has to do with how we bring the show to you now. We can't go into the studio at this time like we usually would do to bring you the best quality, so um, we're doing it from the safety of our home, given the circumstances. So you might not get the same quality that you always get, but we're doing our best to bring the best to you. So um, without further ado, today we will be talking about BEL Safety and Health Week and about the BEL Safety Culture. But before I present to you the guest for today, we're going to take a look at a little video that highlights all of that so that you can get some context into it. So let's take a look at this video that will show more about what BL safety culture is and the observation of BL safety and health week. At BEL, safety is at the core of everything we do. Our employees are important to us. We are committed to promoting a safe working environment for all our employees by providing a safe and healthy workplace in compliance with all relevant legislative requirements and in accordance with leading industry practices and standards. We are also very passionate about safety and health of the public as well. The safety and well-being of our staff, their families and the public is important to us. We are proud to be celebrating our 20th annual Safety and Health Week under the team Embracing the new normal and the future, working together, focus and safe. As you can see, safety is at the core of everything we do at BEL. So today's guest is the safety specialist at BEL, Mr. Zane Fitzpatrick. And in his role as safety specialist at BEL, Zane is responsible for development and implementation of the corporate standards for health performances, health and safety performances, that is, all the health and safety policies and assisting in the annual safety action plan. Zane, welcome to the Watson Wise. Thank you for having me, Natalie. All right, Zane, so tell us more about the safety culture at BEL and what the company's approach is right now that we are living in the COVID-19 era. Right. Natalie, at BL, we are committed to promoting a safe working environment for all our employees. We are very passionate about ensuring that our employees live healthy lifestyles and ensuring that safety is a part of what we do for the communities that we serve. This leads us to our corporate health and safety policy, which guides how we work, Natalie. At BEL, we will not compromise employee and public safety, and we will strive for excellence in our safety performance. We also provide a safe and healthy workplace in compliance with all relevant legislative requirements and in accordance with the best leading industry practices and standards, Natalie. I like how you set out with a passion, Zane. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's it i mean the 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 the, the safety policies and 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 um you know the 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 policy is like you know it's it's at the core of everything we do so right. it it's important that exactly so you're and you are bringing out the fashion in which we do these things to adhere to these safety standards That's but right, i noticed right. then that it, in there it says there's this statement that says no work requirement is more important than ensuring the job is performed safely so how does the safety and health department at bl ensure the fulfillment of this statement that is a great observation natalie our approach to safety and health um is that health and safety is the responsibility of all employees at all levels. The safety, health and environment department manages an effective occupational safety and health system throughout the company. We work together with other departments to ensure that our employees are properly trained to fulfill their duties as they continue to offer safe and effective electricity to you, our, our consumers, our, our, the community that we serve. Throughout the year, BL promotes safety messages to ensure the public is aware of hazardous activities that can impact their lives. And we also share messages for best practices. These include the kite flying messages, where we ask you to use thread and fishing line as opposed to a metal string. The road safety message, where we encourage you to drive defensively at all time. And the hurricane and storm messages, where we, we implore that we, we ask you to, to learn how to turn off your circuit breaker if you anticipate flooding and always, always have an evacuation plan. These are just some of the safety messages that we share throughout the year. Even more so now that we are in the COVID-19 era, we have ensured that safety of the staff and the public by having employees work from home. Those who can do so, we allow them to work from home. Our technical team who are out there working, right, are equipped with N95 mask, K95 mask and sanitizing material to ensure that they are safe at all times as they carry out their duties, Natalie. The company even went as far as to establish a COVID-19 safety coordinator whose role it is to oversee and champion all aspects BL, of, of BL's comprehensive approach to protect the health and well-being of our employee against the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. These include the coordinating development, implementation, monitoring, and communicating to all employees the strategies we, uh, we are employing. And this is done in conjunction with our human resource department. That, that's a lot of information, very detailed and very informative, Zain. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing that with the public. And um, it's, it's very important for everyone to know um, what it is like for us at BL with, you know, putting safety at the core of everything right. we do. So let's just transition now into talking about the safety and health week, Zain. Um, I know that this year we're celebrating the 20th Safety and Health Week, the 20th anniversary, and we will be we are we have been observing it under the team, embracing the new normal and the future, working together, focused and safe. Yes, Natalie, our annual Safety and Health Week started this week, Monday, 27th October, and it ends today, Friday, October 1st. The theme actually came about as a result of the pandemic that we currently live in, Natalie. All right, the team reminds us that while life must go on, we must behave and then uh, we must behave or carry ourselves around in a manner to protect ourselves, our family and the communities that we serve. The team was uh, selected from among several entries that were submitted by staff. I'd like to extend congratulations and say thank you once again to Ms. Marcia Fox and you, Natalie for contributing towards the winning theme. I feel special, boy, I feel special. Congrats, <laughs> Ms. Marcia, as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, so can we um, go into now, what were the activities like this week? Can you share some of that, um, the safety and health week activities? Right, Natalie, it's been an exciting week so far. Some of the activities that we had on Monday, we, we opened up with our virtual opening ceremony with addresses which complemented our theme. We also had virtual presentations from professionals in their field about skill set 
for coping with the present situation and self-care so that we do not get burned out. This presentation did remind us that health, both mental and physical, are important, especially in this time. All right. We also had an initiative where we asked employees to send photos and videos and, and post it to our internal social media sites, telling us why they work safe. Throughout the week, we have asked the various departments to host their monthly safety meeting. And today, we wrap up with this segment, Natalie. Nice, nice. It, it, it has been an exciting week. But then, you know, um, with the pandemic, which we can't deny we're still in, unfortunately, um, we, like I mentioned at the, at the beginning of the show, we have had to re-envision how we do things. And it also goes in line with what we have been doing with safety and health week. And so because we have turned to doing things virtually now, I know that one of the things that primary schools always look up to was our safety fair, which should happen on a day like today. Um, where we would invite primary school students to come in and, and look at the different safety booths, not only um, safety booths from BEL, but um, other stakeholders and partners that would come and make presentations. So this was something exciting that not only the kids, but we also look forward to, to having them come to our corporate headquarters. But then, so what have we done this year to still have inclusion of these primary school students? Naturally, indeed, we had to be a bit innovative since the onset of the COVID last year. In fact, we hosted our second Safety and Health Week essay competition that was aimed at the upper division of the primary school, all right, where we invited students uh, to submit essay with their views on our theme, embracing the new normal and the future, working together, focused and safe. So in essence, Natalie, this was our approach to, to, to keep the children engaged, to keep the primary school uh, students included as we always did in the past. That is so great to still be able to showcase their brilliant minds, to have that focus on, on them and hear from them as well um, about what's happening, not only in Belize, but in the rest of the world. And I think it, 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 it's very great that we got to do that. So I understand that there were over 160 entries. Can you tell us more about that and um, give us a little look at who the winners were? Indeed, Natalie. Uh, we did receive 169 submissions from various schools throughout the country. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank everyone who, who submitted their essay. We enjoyed reading it. We had a 30 standard for entries. We had 42 from standard five, and we had 64 entries from standard six. And so we have gone through the process to select the winners. And if you allow me, I'd like to share the winners here with you guys today. All right, so from standard four, we have Mr. Benjamin Lopez Jr. from Santa Clara, San Roman RC School from the Corozal District. In second place, we have Mr. Dara Hernandez from Grace Primary, the Belize District. Then we have Aviel Arzu in third place from Pachacan RC in the Corazal District. For the standard five winners, we have Mr. Omar Deshiel in first place from the St. Vincent Palote from the Kaya District. Second place, we have Mr. Amen Brackett from United Evergreen Primary, also in Kaya. And third place, we have Tunade Aguilar from Our Lady of Guadalupe Primary, also from the Kaya District. All right. And then the standard six winners were Corey Henkes from La Isla Carinosa Academy from Kikaka Village. We had second place, Ms. Zenin Mendes from La Immaculada RC. All right, that's Orindwak, that's in Orindwak District. And then in third place, we had Ms. Rania Kelly from United Evergreen, once again, here in the Kaya District. Again, thanks to everyone that participated. And we encourage primary schools, primary school students to look out for a competition next year. Let's make it bigger and better, guys. Mm, I excited already and don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, but schools also got to get some prizes as a result of this essay competition, right? That is correct, Natalie. Okay, good. So um, thank you so much, everyone. Again, everyone who entered the essays, all the schools that helped, because um, it, I think for the most part, it was like a community effort in 
helping these students, you know, get their essays in and, you know, writing about what's happening as well. So thanks to parents, thanks to teachers and the schools that helped um, these students submit these wonderful essays. And thank you all for your submission. So then we move to another part of the show. We have this tradition where we refer to our Facebook page and look around for what our customers, what the public wants to know, um, okay. specifically today about safety, since we're talking about that. And so we have some questions from the public that we would like you to share some insight on. Sure. And so let's look at some of the questions. One of the questions is coming from Haven Monette Steven, and she's asking, what are the most common electrical problems that can happen in my home, and how can I prevent it from ever happening? Um, if you allow me, Zane, we have another question which is similar, so I'll just read it um, well, one time so that you can just respond to both since they're no similar. No this one comes from Evian. I hope I got the name right. Evian Broster is saying, should we buy a surge protector to our, for our electricity box, which should give the entire house coverage? What all should be connected to surge, surge protectors? Does every outlet need one? How, do faulty wire, how does faulty wiring affect bills? Are there specific drivers in terms of electricity consumption? So what I surmise from both these questions, they're asking about electri electrical safety inside the home. So can you provide some insight? Right, Natalie, uh, one of the first things I would advise uh, these young women or the general public right, is to make sure that your home is wired by a licensed electrician. That is the first way to have a peace of mind, all right? I also want to include that when connecting appliances, you always have to be cautious of overloading your power strips and your outlet, all right? So we have to be cognizant of how many things we plug into these outlets and the power strip. We want to connect large appliances directly into outlets and we don't want to use extension. All right, we always want to ensure that we purchase all right, electrical devices, lighting and appliances, and, and always check for the UL label that they meet the safety standards. All right, and I also encourage you to use the surge protector for other protection, especially to sensitive equipment, such as your, your flat screen. Right. I think you have answered to a lot of the questions that um, have been asked on the thread because a lot of them were related and also, I would like to invite everyone who asks these questions to browse our Facebook page because we have a lot of wonderful tips on safety, on consumption. So I invite you to, you know, take a look around our page. These are so beautifully animated. They, they look so, you know, like easy to bring across the information. So I would invite you. And of course, we will be answering your questions on the thread as well um, later on during the course of today. Then, the time for me to tell you bye, boy. This was a very exciting session. Um, of course, we wish we could share much more information, but unfortunately, our time is short um, today. And as always, it's a short show. But hopefully, we can bring more about, bring or talk about this another time, um, bring more information about the safety, safety things that BL does on a regular basis because it goes far above and beyond what we have shared today. And That's I hope right. we have encompassed most of it, um, the most important aspects of it. Then I'm very thankful that you took some time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me, Natalie. It was my pleasure. All right, bye then. All right, guys, so we move on now. As you know, um, we already read the question for today and of course there were so much more and out of all those comments and questions and you know just interaction on our page we have chosen a lucky winner and today's winner is none other than drum roll heaven monet steven congratulations heaven you have won yourself what you are seeing on the screen a variety of bel promo items the laptop and um, not laptop it's a tablet with keyboard and um i see headphones oh my gosh this is a collection to die for congratulations haven 
please send us a private message to our Facebook page with your number so that we can try to arrange how to get these items to you. With that, guys, we wrap today's show. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, everyone that tuned in today, everyone that participated. Um, we want to thank Idea Lab for helping us bring this live to you, everyone at BEL. Hi, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And see you next time on the What's and Why's of Energy.